Hello, I'm Kate McEachran, and I'm gonna to talk to you about a day in the life of a case here at Thomson Reuters in Egan, Minnesota. Every year, we handle hundreds of thousands of cases from local, federal, state courts all across the United States. A few of those are more anticipated than others. One of them was the United States Supreme Court decision in Arizona versus the Arizona Intertribal Council. On June 17th, the court handed down that decision. It held that Arizona's requirements that would-be voters provide proof of United States citizenship was preempted by the National Voter Registration Act. Within 38 seconds after we received that decision, the decision was online and available to legal researchers using Westlaw or Westlaw Next. Enhancing the case so that it's most effectively available to researchers has several steps. The first thing we do is we capture it and we load it to Westlaw. The next thing we do is we create the Keysight history chain so that a researcher sees the perspective of this decision on other decisions it affects. The third thing we do is we write headnotes which summarize each legal point in a case. And those headnotes are fed to our statutes editors so that if a judicial decision affects a statute, we will also advise researchers of that quickly with validity italics. Finally, those headnotes are classified to subject matter, again, so that they can most efficiently be found by researchers. When the Supreme Court's in session, we monitor their activity very closely. We're looking for new opinions. Our goal is to load those new opinions to Westlaw within five minutes. Once we have the opinion in-house, we create a metadata record for it, and that allows us to track the opinion as it goes through the various editorial steps. The first stop along the way is Keysight. That's where we add the direct history relationship for the case. It allows a researcher to see how the case has proceeded through the court. For the Arizona voter registration case, we added an affirmed reference showing that the Supreme Court had affirmed the decision of the Ninth Circuit. Once we created that relationship, it was available to customers within two minutes. As soon as our team received the Supreme Court's opinion, we immediately started creating the editorial enhancements for the case, which included the synopsis, head notes, a code note, and negative indirect history. As you can see, the synopsis we created for this opinion contains the procedural background of the case. In addition, we also created numerous head notes for the case. This specific head note sets forth the court's main holding which was that the National Voter Registration Act preempted Arizona's proof of citizenship requirement. Classification is the historic West key number system, which is designed to lead a researcher to a particular topical area. This is a way that a researcher gets all the cases that are on point. The key number system has 400 topics, and those are subdivided into over 100,000 individually classifiable key numbers. So for this case, um, the issue is whether federal law preempts state voter registration law. We would probably pick classifications from the topics elections and states because it deals with preemption of state voter registration laws. Now the decision is on Westlaw with Keysight history, with headnotes, and those headnotes have been classified to a major topical area. This looks to a customer like a fully enhanced Westlaw case but we're going to weave it further into products offered by Westlaw and Thomson Reuters. The next group that's going to be alerted is the Codes and Regulations group. First, I classify the case's head notes as notes of decisions under each statute discussed in the case. Many of these notes of decisions appear under validity catchphrases called blue lines. Next, I added validity italics to the statute that the court held preempted. Validity italics call a researcher's attention to the fact that a statute may be unenforceable. These validity italics are especially important for users of unannotated print products such as desktop codes or slice pamphlets. We will continue to monitor further court and legislative developments on this issue to ensure that we update our NODs and validity italics as the situation develops. For example, should the legislature amend the preempted statute to try to remedy the constitutional issues, we will be ready. If we were to receive a law, that address this issue, I would load that law to our Legis database, which contains all of our legislative materials. Upon that load to Legis, links would be created in our statutes database in the form of Keysight flags. 
If a customer sees a Keysight flag on a statute section and clicks on it, they will be taken directly to the session law where they can see exactly what is being changed in the text. On the effective date of the law, we would then release the updated text to the statute's database and remove that Keysight flag because the customer would then be seeing the updated text. Westlaw has primary law products like cases and statutes, which are the major databases on Westlaw. But in addition to that, we integrate our decisional and our statutory materials into a full range of analytical products. We have the broad articles that give you a survey of the topic, and we have the specific focused articles where a case like Arizona could be critical to someone digging deeper into an area of the law. As we continue our evolution to a legal solutions business, the care and passion that our editorial team brings to work every day is at the heart of what we do. Taking the editorial heritage from St. Paul, Minnesota, and combining it with the know-how expertise brought by PLC gives us a unique collection of assets that helps us solve the problems throughout the legal professional's workflow.